He is the spheres of the Spirit of God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then the seventh, the transition, the seventh, the eighth is at one with God. Every single person at one with God does not define themselves as anything different to how you define yourself. <clears throat> Do you know what I mean by that? In other words, every angel in that location <coughs> was in fact a person who was on earth at some point. Every person in that location believes themselves to be exactly the same as you. They will never call themselves an avatar. They will never call themselves your teacher even. Right? They will never call themselves your master. Quite often I'm called the master and I don't like it because it's just like, what's it saying? It's holding, you up to it's holding me up above yeah. and it's not true. I'm not above anyone. You follow me? So every single person there will never feel themselves to be greater than you are. Now, in the sixth sphere, there are many spirits in the sixth sphere who believe themselves to be God. <clears throat> uh, the majority of them, in fact, feel that they are God. They feel at that point what one with God means is that because we're all at one with God is what they tell themselves. They all become God. So they're all just pieces of God. And so when they communicate with you, they start saying to you that it's God talking to you. And it happens in many other spheres lower than the six too. For instance, the conversations with God, with Neil Donald Walsh, for example. It was conversations with a spirit who thought himself as God. Right? And it's a second sphere spirit. Anyway, the avatars, what happens is many spirits in this condition here look at the earth and they're very, very interested in helping the earth. Very interested in helping people on earth be in a higher state of love. So what they do is they choose some parents who they feel, so here's the parents, right, who they feel are quite connected with God, who are going to have a child that's going to be quite mediumistic. Right? Mediumistic. Any person who's quite free of emotions is going to be quite mediumistic. Mm -hmm. right? And when I say quite free of emotions, I don't mean they have no emotions. What I mean is, there are some emotions, and the emotions in particular are the ones connected with the spirit, that they don't have. In other words, they're comfortable talking to people they can't see. Mm -hmm. right? Not many of us are comfortable doing that, are we? Mm -hmm. right? So there are people who are comfortable doing that, who recognise the truth of doing that, and many of them come from... Right? Some of them come from parents who have also had that same ability. In other words, the emotional injury that causes you to disconnect from spirits, they don't have. Right? So what these spirits here do is they select this child and then they actually become connected with the child while it's in the womb generally. Right? And then they heavily influence that child with their own teachings and beliefs and systems. Now, every Dalai Lama has had this happen to them mm. right, in subsequent generations. Mm. Right? And every Dalai Lama, generally, if you hear them speak, you'll find that they'll get to a point where they feel the disconnection from that spirit. Because that's usually what happens, is they get to a stage in their own development where they no longer need that assistance. And the spirit is disconnected. So what happens is that this Spirit here then guides this person as they're growing. And this person then is often called an avatar. Right? A person who already knows the truth even from the moment they were born. In reality, the spirit is the one who knows the truth. And they are just heavily influenced by that spirit. Mm -hmm. And the spirit's... The spirit in the sixth sphere who does it, no spirit in the seventh sphere or above would do it, but the spirit in the sixth sphere who chooses to do it, decides to do it because he feels that it's the most loving thing he can do to help people on the earth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why they're focused in that manner. Is that like the best they can do for us? That's the best a person in the sixth sphere can actually do for somebody on the earth, yes. So from their own perspective, they are feeling like, this is the best thing I can do to demonstrate my love 
for people on earth who I really want to be in a state of love. So it's still got to be a higher truth on earth though, doesn't it? It's still got to be helpful. <coughs> Or is it unhelpful? Well, it certainly is helpful. If this spirit's love is reflecting through this person, mm -hmm. then obviously every person around that person is going to feel a higher degree of love at different times. Mm -hmm. The problem becomes is what's happening to the person. Mm -hmm. The person themselves often passes without clearing any of their negative emotional baggage, mm -hmm. which means that they often pass into the first sphere of the spirit world with lots of emotional baggage, but particularly in the, in the Eastern philosophies with usually a lot of sexual baggage, because oftentimes they feel that they have sexual relationships because of this love coming from them, they're attracting lots of women in particular, or that, that they have sexual relationships with, and they, they cause a lot of self-damage in that process. And then by the time they pass, they're actually passing into the first sphere. So the person themselves is in a first sphere condition when they pass, and then needs a lot of help to get... So the spirit's <coughs> taking them over in a good way, yep. what they think is a good way, yep. but because they're taken over, they don't deal with their own shit. Yep. And also, when you think about it, no spirit above there will do that. And the reason why is because the free will of that soul is paramount mm -hmm. to a person that's at one with God. The free will of that soul is not paramount to the person who's in the sixth sphere. The sixth sphere thinks in a more collective manner. In other words, they think that what's good for the whole is good for the one. You said that Hitler and um, uh, somebody else were in the first sphere. Yeah, well, they were in the hells of the first sphere. There are like yeah, thousands of planes in the first sphere. Planes in the yeah, and the darkest planes are the, the deepest planes are where Hitler were and ones, ones like that in history have been. So what would be some examples, like um, David Hawkins, all this stuff on Almost every single form of spiritual development that has ever occurred on earth has been influenced by a spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some very clear things that you can see about that, like the Book of Mormon, for example. There's, there's an obvious spirit influence there. I don't know if any of you have been associated with the Mormon religion, but Joseph Smith received channeling, channeled information from spirits. Right? And so that, that whole religious form was created, if you like, by spirits, not by persons on earth. Was that the six spirits? Uh, they were in the six spirits, yeah, the spirits, uh, uh, yep, and channeled information. But the information was very biblically based and then modified and so forth. So there were so quite... The a Ramtha was in the sixth sphere up until very, very recently. Yeah, I've been really connected with him. Yeah. yeah. What happened uh, about two and a half years ago, actually, I, I actually spoke to Ramtha about the Divine Love Path. Before then, he was on the Natural Love Path, and he instantly changed on the Divine Love Path as soon as we spoke. It's very so he unusual. Was, he was coming from the sixth sphere. He was in the sixth sphere? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how long did it take him to progress? He, he, within a few weeks, was in a, in a one in a condition with God. He, Rantha had a, a very interesting soul feelings from his soul. and his, The feelings from his soul were quite deep emotions about caring and loving people on earth. He had a really strong desire to help people on earth. And his strong love was something that was really powerful for him. And so what happened as soon as he heard about the divine path, he instantly saw that the divine path was a way for him to more powerfully assist people on earth. When you say divine path, what do you mean? You know? um, we, that was in the introduction DVDs. Yeah. Divine path, two paths. Um, yes, there are two paths you can go by. <laughs> and, <laughs> quote for you. And the divine path is a path that actually is what I'm describing, which is this emotional connection with God and longing for God's love to enter you. The natural love path is developing your love to its fullest capacity to reflect to others. Can you like see the difference? My suggestion is to watch the original DVD if you can. The, the um, Ramtha was on the natural love path right? and communicating with Jay Z Knight here on earth and influencing her and many of the followers to follow the techniques and metaphysical techniques that he had developed in order to help a person on that natural love path. What happened when we discussed it, he was with his soulmate as well. He, 
that he'd been in the spirit world for 35,000 years or so. And, and so he'd been in that state for most of that time. And when we talked about it with him, he instantly saw the need to actually follow the divine love path if he wanted to have a more powerful help. Did you have to go back a bit? He had to, yeah. But he did all of that. Time is not a constraint. And he did all that within a few days. So within a few days, he was actually on the divine love path and actually in the state of it one month with God. There was very little he needed to work through emotionally. And where is he now? He, he's, I think he's in the ninth sphere actually now. But he's growing very rapidly. Does that mean some of his techniques that he's still teaching is, you know, was limited? Yeah, I don't know if you know what's happened to JZ uh, recently. Um, I, I've just got some little takes about the consciousness and energy techniques. Yeah, what, what's happened to JZ Knight as a result of this is that she now is in a state of a fair bit of confusion. Mm. Because what, what's gone on is that the spirit who was connecting with her is now no longer connecting with her because he can't, because she doesn't believe what he's saying to her anymore. And so he, she had been trying to connect with some other spirits who wanted to take over from Rantha, but she could feel, she is quite sensitive to energy. So she was quite sensitive to the fact that they're different. And so now she's in a bit of a state of confusion. And this is why recently in her world tours, she's having, she doesn't understand why, but she's having quite a bit of confusion as so a result. she's not channeling him anymore? No, but she could. Yeah. She could. As soon as she got onto the divine love path, she would be able to channel him again. 